Mel and Miss Mitchell are at the house, sir. Oh, they are? All right. Come on. Personally, I think it's just plain stupidity to drop it. Now, you should see us fan mail. Thousands. Why, it's going over like a house of fire. What are you afraid of, Canal? It's doubled our circulation. Yeah, but it's got everybody sore. Ads are being pulled. The governor's starting a libel suit. What's more, they all know John Doe's a phony, and they insist on seeing well, what him. What about it? Let them see him. We'll go on one better. They can also hear him. You own a radio station, Mr. Norton. Why not put him on the hair? Watch out for this damn DB. She'll drive you batty. Oh, Look, I... we can't let him get to this Bush League pitcher and start pumping him. Good night. Now, tell him what that screwball might do. I walk in yesterday, here he is, standing on a table with a fishing pole, fly casting. Take my advice and get him out of town before this thing explodes in our faces. If you do, Mr. Norton, you're just as much of a dumb cluck as he is. Excuse me. No, you got yourself a meal ticket and you hate to sure let go. Sure, it's a meal ticket for me, I admit it, but it's also a windfall for somebody like Mr. Norton who's trying to crash national politics. That's what you bought the newspaper for, isn't it? You want to reach a lot of people, don't you? Well, put John Doe in the air and you can reach 130 million of them. He can say anything he wants and they'll listen to him. All right, we'll forget the governor and the mayor and all the small fry like that. This can arouse national national interest. If he made a hit around here, he can do it every place else in the country. And you'll be pulling the strings, Mr. Norton. Go down to the office and arrange for some radio time. What they be? You're not going to fall. I want it as soon as possible. Okay. I just came in to get warm myself. Come on, let's go. Uh, don't you go. I want to talk to you. Sit down. Yeah, this John Doe idea was yours, huh? Yes, sir. How much money do you get? Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars? Well, um, what are you after? I mean, what do you want? A journalistic career? Money. Money? Well, I'm glad to hear somebody admit it. Do you suppose you could write a radio speech that would put that fellow over? Oh, I'm sure I can. Do it and I'll give you a hundred dollars a week. A hundred dollars? That's only the beginning. You play your cards right, and you'll never have to worry about money again. Oh, I knew it. Hello. Hello. Whenever there's a pretty woman around. <laughs> this is my nephew, Ted Sheldon, Miss Mitchell. How do you do? How do you do? All right, Casanova, I'll give you a break. See that Miss Mitchell gets a car to take her home. Always reading my mind, aren't you? Thank you very much for everything. And Miss Mitchell, I think from now on you'd better work directly with me. Yes, sir. Right. Oh, yes, you will, Anne, dear. You're very clever. Yeah, I know. What are you looking for? Your purse. I need $10. What for? I gave you 50 just the other day. Yes, I know, dear, but Mrs. Burke had her baby yesterday. Nine pounds. Mm. And there wasn't a thing in the house. And then the community chest lady came... And the 50's all gone, huh? Who's the 10 for? The Webster's. The Webster's. You remember those lovely people your father used to take care of. I thought I'd buy them some groceries. Oh, Anne, dear, it's a shame those You're poor... marvelous, Ma. You're just like Father used to be. Do you realize a couple of weeks ago we didn't have enough to eat ourselves? 
Well, yes, I know, dear, but these people are in such need. And we have plenty now. If you're thinking of that thousand dollars, forget it. It's practically all gone. We owed everybody in town. Now, you just got to stop giving all your money away. Oh, Anne, dear. Oh, I'm sorry, Ma. Oh, don't pay any attention to me. I guess I'm just upset about all this. Gee whiz, here I am with a great opportunity to get somewhere, to give us security for once in our lives, and I'm stuck. If I could put this over, you or Mrs. Burke can have six babies. You mean this speech you're writing? Yeah, I don't know. I, I simply can't get it to gel. I created somebody who's going to give up his life for a principal. Hundreds of thousands of people are going to listen to him over the radio. And unless he says something that's, well, that's sensational, it's just no good. Well, honey, of course, I don't know what kind of a speech you're trying to write, but judging from the samples I've read, I don't think anybody will listen. What? Darling, there's so many complaining political speeches. People are tired of hearing nothing but doom and despair on the radio. If you're going to have him say anything, why don't you let him say something simple and real, something with hope in it? If your father were alive, he'd know what to say. Oh, yeah. Father certainly would. Wait a minute. Hmm? your father's diary, Anne. Father's... I never knew he had a diary. There's enough in it for a hundred speeches. Things people ought to hear nowadays. You be careful of it, won't you, dear? It's always helped to keep your father alive for me. You better, Wilma. Wait a minute. John Doe don't want to sign no autographs. Well, what does he do all day? What does he do all day? He's writing out his memories. Oh. Oh. Sorry, lady, you can't see Mr. Doe. He wants to be alone. No. No, he just sits around all day and commutes with himself. I don't know how you're going to stand it around here till after Christmas. I'll bet you ain't heard a train whistle in two weeks. and the girl. That's all a guy needs is to get hooked up with a woman. What was that, a single? First baseman dropped the ball. Bloody fingers. Tough luck, pal. Guy has a woman on his hand. First thing he knows, his life is balled up with a lot more things. Furniture. Did you get him? You're out! Swell. What's this, the end of the eighth? Ninth. Uh. Hey, Beanie, there's a couple of mugs in the Chronicle snooping around out here. Huh. Come on, Angel Face. Gangway. What's Come the on. score, Angel Face? Three to two, off paper. Gee, that's great. You got swell form there. Must have been a pretty good pitcher. Pretty good. Say, I was just about ready for the major leagues when I chipped a bone in my elbow. I got it pitching a 19-inning game. 19? Yeah. There was a major league scout there watching me, too. And he came down after a game with a contract. You know what? I couldn't lift my arm to sign it. I'll be okay, though, as soon as I get it fixed up. Yeah, it's too bad. 
What do you mean, too bad? Huh? Oh, that you'll never be able to play again. What are you talking about? I just told you I was going to get... Well, my... you know how they are in baseball. If a guy's mixed up in a racket...